and welcome to your favourite teacher. Um, we are back talking about some of the love and relationship poems. Um, still here with Miss Connolly at South Church, and we're now just going to talk about um, the poem "Walking Away" um, because it, it marries quite nicely with um, the last one that we just spoke about, "Mother Any Distance." Over to you, Miss. Lovely. So, shall I read the poem? Read it out. Okay, read it so out. Walking away. It is 18 years ago, almost to the day. A sunny day with leaves just turning. The touch lines new ruled since I watched you play. Your first game of football. Then, like a satellite, wrenched from its orbit, go drifting away. Behind a scatter of boys, I can see you walking away from me towards the school with the pathos of a half-fledged thing set free into the wilderness. The gate of one who finds no path where the path should be. That hesitant figure eddying away like a winged seed loosened from its parent stem has something I never quite grasped to convey about nature's give and take, the small, the scorching ordeals which fire one's irresolute clay. I have had worse partings, but none that so gnaws my mind still. Perhaps it is roughly saying what God alone could perfectly show, how selfhood begins with the walking away and love is proved in the letting go. Oh, it's so nice. It is a lovely poem. It's I can, such a lovely poem. I can totally see why you picked it to go with Yeah, the, they're powerful, um, isn't it? And when also, like, the natural imagery comes through so you could compare the language really nicely. Yes, definitely. Um, Talk us through it then. Okay, Teach so it, was, it is 18 years ago almost to the day. So he's remembering, it's a memory of his son's first football game. His son is obviously now older, so it's 18 years ago. Yeah. And it just shows that strong love because the parent remembers it was 18, almost to the day. Yeah. And it goes on to say, a sunny day with leaves just turning. So you've got that beautiful, pathetic fallacy of the leaves. Oh, I know, changing seasons. And then you have that changing of seasons. Yeah. So you have that moment of summer and then the leaves just turning. So something's changing son is getting older so the touchline's new rules since I watch you play so you your first game so again it's that memory and your personal pronouns of you and your yeah and then we learn it's his, it's his son's first football game and then it's broken by then and the simile like a satellite wrenched from its orbit so we get this kind of space imagery of a satellite quite aggressive that that yeah, wrenched. wrenched yeah, yeah you've got the verb wrenched it is quite aggressive so it's like he's been taken yeah without um, without any kind of permission and then go drifting away so slowly but surely the, the son is obviously gaining more independence gaining more mature and just slightly drifting away like we all do at some point in our lives from our parents um, and then behind a scatter boys I see you walking away from me towards the school um, and we've got that imagery with pathos of a half-fledged thing set free. And you could link that. Yeah, I with was Mother thinking Annie that when, when you read that. Nature imagery, you've got that little half-fledged bird again. Yeah, just still. similar to the fall and yeah, fly. exactly. And into the wilderness again, so into the unknown. Um, so you can look at that and compare that. Wilderness seems quite dangerous. He's, he's obviously quite protective of the sun, isn't exactly, he? Exactly, yeah. So he's very protective of him and... Um, it's a memory that stays with him forever. Um, and we'll get to that when we get to the last stanza as well, some of the words he uses. So that hesitant figure eddying away. So again, it's almost like the son is quite he hesitant as well. So he's yeah. observing his son and that um, language of eddying away to kind of slowly move yeah, away. Yeah, like inch by inch. Shuffling away, yeah. yeah. And then the simile, like a winged seed loosened from its parent's stem. So, you know those helicopters? That's just what I was thinking of. I used to love letting those fly. Yeah, okay. that's exactly No one can see my hand movements, yeah. but we're flittering down. Yeah, those, those helicopters. Um, did they come off an acorn tree or one of them? I don't know what tree I, they come I'm off. I'm not sure. I'm rubbish at stuff yeah. like that. So, they're usually attached to the to, And when they fall, obviously, they fall onto the ground and we all look at them spiralling down. But it's that imagery of that winged seed attached and then slowly loosening and loosening okay. as the seed go on and eventually breaking yeah. off um, and it says has something I never quite grasped to give about nature's give and takes so you've got your nature imagery again which you can link to mother any distance the small the scorching or ordeals which fire one's resolute clay that's quite powerful that language again the scorching, scorching. is like the wretch it's, yeah it's, it's quite very, aggressive very aggressive yeah. yeah and forceful and the scorching of something is quite hot and 
and harsh and yeah yeah. the fire ones irresolute clay like that's again that doesn't seem like a pleasant process no and he does perceive it as um i think on the parents point of view as quite a a difficult um, process to watch and both he perceives that on the son side as well that it's quite nerve-wracking as well quite hesitant as you're growing up you're fearful of what the other world has to has to offer what the outside world has to offer i should say and then in the last stanza, it says, I have had worse partings, but none that so gnaws at my mind still. That word gnaw, yeah. very much like animal imagery. So a dog yeah. gnawing on a bone. So it's eating away at him constantly. And, yeah. yeah. So it's constant. And he said, perhaps um, roughly saying what God alone could perfectly show, how selfhood begins with walking away. So we begin our own lives by walking away from our parents, walking away and becoming more independent. This is really poignant. I know. And I our, like it. So do I. And our, and our parents prove their love by letting us go and make those mistakes. Oh, what a lovely poem. It's lovely. I, I can't believe I was teaching power and conflict and all about war and <laughs> death and like destruction. And there are these beautiful poems about relationships that were just there. Yeah, just it, at the it's tip lovely. of my fingers. Okay, so what what are some of the things that we could pick up on them? What are if you were revising this? Obviously, we've gone through it in quite a lot of detail, but some small things to remember, some small key words and phrases. I would look at the first line. It was eighteen years ago, and maybe you could look at a sunny day. So just those two lines together, mm-hmm. just showing at the beginning everything is wonderful and yeah. we have our son with us, and then that beautiful imagery of the leaves just turning. So the the poet or the speaker is aware that his son is going to grow up. The leaves are going to turn from yeah. lovely blossoming green down to through whatever autumn and winter when eventually. Well, they yeah, we go. see the whole season really yeah. represented structurally in the poem from starting summer, but then because we imagine this as we were saying with the seed, seed that's autumn. something that happens in autumn. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, I would also look at the, like a satellite, wrench from its orbit yeah. to feel that his son is just taken from him. And people so love soon. a simile to talk about, don't they? Exactly, because they, they can remember. identify that. Yeah. And, and if it comes up, they'll be well able to identify that and that that verb to wrench. Um, I'd also look at the lovely winged seed loosened yeah. from its parent stem because we could link that. And the half-fledged thing. Yeah, we could link those really nicely yeah. with um, with Mother Any Distance. I could never take long quotes. I say that again. I always ever get my students to pick out small ones that they can write a lot about. And the obviously the last two lines of the poem. I think need I think any included. poem that you want to look at in your exams, if you if you don't talk about the first and last lines. You, you're shooting yourself in the foot but because a poet the wants, most powerful. Yeah, a poet needs to leave a, enough of an impression to begin with yes. and leave a lasting impression at the end. Exactly. And so there's always something you can talk about. That, and he definitely leaves us yeah. the message there and love is proved in letting go. So even if they remember just that, just that line themselves, um, they could write so much about that yeah. and they could link that back to Mother Any Distance as well in which... Um, the hatch opens to an endless sky to fall or to fly. Yeah. Okay, so love is proved there by allowing the sun open up the hatch and to make his own mistakes and to fly. Definitely. And I think both of these have really strong parental relationships, don't they? Yes, exactly. Except this, obviously, poet and the speaker in here feels a sense of loss, doesn't he, really? Yeah. His um, son going away feels like it gnaws at his mind still... um, been wrenched away from its orbit so some of the language there feels the heat well yeah ordeals he doesn't see it as as quite a light or a positive as in the other poem so you could look at maybe the comparison of the feelings there and the comparison of the speaker being um son in one and father in the other, the other exactly yeah so in and they're distance, differing yeah it's the son and then in this poem we have the father's account of his son growing up okay well i hope that's been helpful thank you very much <laughs>